In the world of racing, the allure of speed is a dream shared by many, yet experienced by few. While most race fans may never step into the driver's seat of a true NASCAR stock car, there are adrenaline-fueled opportunities, like the Rusty Wallace racing experience, that brings this fantasy to life. For most participants, it's an exhilarating adventure, pushing speeds beyond 150 miles per hour. But what happens when something goes wrong? Unfortunately for one man, his desire for speed led to tragedy, and it wasn't his fault. Hoping for a thrill, he died driving a race car at the Kentucky Speedway last year. Tonight, that man's parents filed a lawsuit saying someone or some company is to blame. An adventure at the Kentucky Speedway ends with a death. An Indiana man went there to get a taste of what it's like to be a NASCAR driver. It ended in a way his family could never have imagined. Was flown to University of Cincinnati Medical Center. The Hamilton County coroner says he died this weekend. Fine young man, and it's a, a very, very difficult time for the family. The Rusty Wallace Racing Experience offers a variety of services. You can ride along with a professional driver or drive a car. And no, not just a NASCAR stock car, but late models, exotic supercars, dragsters, and even open wheel cars. With over 50 tracks across the United States to choose from, there is bound to be a location somewhat near you. You can take just a few hot laps around the track, all the way up to 100 laps if your wallet allows for it. So this sounds good. For a few hundred dollars, you can take laps around a raceway. Great. But things can go wrong. I mean, anytime you drive anything, you can crash. Especially because the barrier to entry is very low. All you need is a few hundred dollars and a driver's license. You need absolutely zero experience, which is great. I mean, 90% of people who try it out have no experience, but it does raise some concerns at the same time. Interestingly, there is not much training for it. According to the website, you arrive, register, do a 45-minute safety class, then they throw you out on track. Now, to be fair for most people, driving a car in circles on a wide track is pretty self-explanatory, and especially so for NASCAR fans that have an understanding of racing lines and the basics of how to drive a race car. It's also important to note that these are restricted cars, meaning you will not be able to go as fast as you see on TV. That said, on super speedways, you can get up to over 150 miles per hour, which is no small feat. Although the website states that accidents are very rare, it acknowledges that they do happen. After all, there is insurance that you can buy for under $100. Essentially, if you purchase it and wreck a car, the most you will pay out of pocket is $1,000 for all the damages. So, I think that's fair. But let's take a look at some of these crashes that have happened. Obviously, these wrecks are relatively tame compared to NASCAR crashes. This is simply because of the slower speeds and they're just driving by themselves with no one else on track, or at least close to them. But Stephen Cox had an entirely different experience. Stephen Cox of Illinois had the dream of any race fan, jumping in a NASCAR stock car. So in 2014, when he received a voucher for his 30th birthday to drive laps around the Kentucky Speedway, he was all in. He got to the track on September 14th, 2014, where he hopped in a Generation 4 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Photos of Steven jumping into the car about to take laps can be seen. He was obviously very excited. But after he lapped the track only two times, tragedy struck. Coming out of the trioval, Steven's steering wheel detached, making Steven lose total control of his car. With nothing else he could do, he slammed on the brakes and tried to get the wheel back on as his car soared straight to the inside wall. Moments later, his car impacted the inside wall in turn 1 at 100 miles per hour, shot across the track and hit the outside wall, before sliding down the track and coming to rest. Little did anyone know of the true horror that was waiting. Steven was rushed to the hospital with many injuries the most extreme being a basilar skull fracture. Yes, 
the same injury that took the lives of so many professional drivers in the same generation for a car. A week later, on September 21st, 2014, Stephen succumbed to his injuries. Obviously, the incident was at no fault of the driver whatsoever. I mean, the steering wheel came off, and no amount of training, especially in a 45-minute safety brief, can prepare someone who has never driven a race car for this scenario. After assessing the car, not only did the steering wheel come off, authorities stated it had been installed backwards, and the Hans device was not installed correctly. Further, his seat was too far forward, potentially making it even harder to put the steering wheel back into place and putting his body in harm's way. The A-pillar cracked, suggesting the car was not up to the safety standards of an actual stock car. Lastly, there was no safer barrier there. The car hit a concrete wall. I mean, there were six contributing factors to the incident, all of which could have been prevented, and even if one of these factors were fixed, it could have saved his life. And to add to all of these problems, Kentucky Speedway at the time promoted itself as NASCAR's roughest track. According to investigations, it's doubtful that the bumps were a contributing factor to the steering wheel coming off, but it certainly didn't help in my opinion. Another controversial detail is the fact that police were not notified of the crash. They did not find out about it until Cox had already passed away, where one officer saw the story on TV. Now, police were not legally required to be called because it was a private event on private property. But this meant that investigation wouldn't start until a month after the incident. None of these problems, including the fact that the steering wheel fell off, were not known for some time, unfortunately leaving the family in the dark for quite a while. Of course, a lawsuit came following the incident in mid-2015, and this revealed a lot of details about what happened. Directly from the case, Cox's family claimed that the defendants wrongfully placed an amateur driver with no racing experience in a poorly equipped and maintained race car at an outrageously, inadequately operated activity. They also claimed that the equipment in the race car and the assembly materials were out of date and inadequate, the head support was cracked, and the restraint systems were expired. The family also stated that a panic-stricken Stephen desperately struggled to reattach the steering wheel and control the race car. The steering wheel was found next to the seat of the race car alongside Stephen's leg after the fatal crash. Another point brought up was the fact that this was the third case of a steering wheel coming off in a driving experience race car. The case file also revealed that the extra padding in the car meant that he sat too close forward and as a result, a structural support tube struck his head. The family stated that his injuries were severe, including multiple and extensive fractures to the base of his skull, spine, femur, tibia, fibula, and ankles, together with numerous catastrophic acute internal injuries. That is a load of injuries. Now, this was undoubtedly a horrible event, and it may not have been handled the best way, especially considering that their equipment was at fault. However, I don't want to scare people away from trying it, and I'm not saying not to do it. This video is not a hate video at all, and I'm simply telling a story. I mean, the director of sales stated that they had 150,000 drivers to participate over a three-year span in 2012 to 2014. Accounting for all the years that has been active, this case is truly one in a million. However, this does not excuse the improper training of the staff that allowed Stephen to step into the car that day. Reportedly, the staff had no formal training on the safety equipment inside of the car. Maybe they didn't even know the safety equipment wasn't up to standards. No additional safety measures were taken from the racing experiences side publicly after the accident, but I'm sure at least something was done to ensure nothing like this happens again. No public settlement or result of the case is publicly online that I can find. The case file, which will be in the description below, has a lot of photos to support everything, but I hope the family can get the justice they deserve. Naturally, the family didn't make any big public statements following the incident, but it was no doubt hard for them. Stephen's father was at the track, and it's a heartbreaking story. Stephen was not a professional driver. 
he was just a guy who went to the Speedway in late 2014 to have some fun for his 30th birthday, and it ended in the worst way possible. No one could have expected this result. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it or find it interesting. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you never miss a video. And let me know down in the comments down below what you guys want me to cover in some future videos. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.